When you add various visual elements to your button design, each of those items will be added as a layer, and you can manage all of those layers on the Layers panel. Up at the top right, you'll see that we have a Layers panel. We can expand or collapse the Layers panel. So, for example, you can collapse in order to better view the overall button design, and then expand that Layers panel just by clicking the pop-up arrow at the top right, when you want to actually view the various layers and, more importantly, manage those layers on the Layers panel. There are a variety of ways that we can work with the layers on the Layers panel. One of the options that you'll likely find very helpful is the ability to turn off the visibility for individual layers. This is especially helpful, for example, when you're trying to figure out which layer is which in your button design. For example, I have a couple of shapes here and I might want to know which one is that rectangular shape versus the circular shape. And so I can go to the particular layer that I believe might be the layer in question on the Layers panel, and then click the eye icon to turn off the visibility for that layer. And of course I can click again to turn on that visibility, and so here I have confirmed that this topmost shape layer is the rectangular layer. If I decide that I want to remove a layer from my button design, I can simply delete a layer. Because I've clicked on this layer on the Layers panel, it is automatically selected. I could, of course, click on the layer within my button design as well. Then I can delete a layer in a couple of ways. I could click the trash can, the Delete button, up on the toolbar above my button design, or over on the Layers panel, I can click the trash can found there, associated with the particular layer that I want to delete. So in this case, I don't feel that I need this rectangular shape, so I'll click that trash can icon, and then click the delete button in the confirmation dialog that appears, and you can see that the layer has been deleted. We can also adjust the overall order of the layers, in other words, which layer appears on top of another. You may have noticed, for example, that the text is actually behind this circular shape, and I'd like the text to be on top of the circular shape. Taking a look at the Layers panel, you can see that sure enough, my text layer appears below the shape layer, and I could turn off the visibility for the individual layer, or simply click on a layer to select it in order to confirm which layer is which. So now that I know which text layer I want to have above a particular shape layer, I can simply adjust the layer order on the Layers panel. And so I'll use the Move icon here and simply click and drag in order to reposition the layer into the desired order. So in this case, I need that text layer to appear above, not below, the shape layer. So once I've gotten that layer into position, I'll release the mouse button, and you can see that I've now reordered the layers so that the text layer appears above the shape layer, and as we can see in the button design, that makes that text much more legible. We can also copy and paste layers, in other words, to duplicate a given layer. Here, for example, I've sized the image in the background, but it's not filling all of the space for my button design, and so I want to duplicate, enlarge, and blur that layer in order to fill in the additional space. So I can click either on the Layers panel or within the button design to select that image, and then up on the toolbar, I can click first the Copy button in order to copy that, in this case, image layer, and then click the clipboard icon, the Paste button, in order to paste that layer that I had copied. So now I have an additional copy of the image layer, and so in this case, for example, I might go to the Filters option and increase the value for Blur, and then I can enlarge that layer so that it will fill in that available space. So I'll make that layer a little bit larger and then reposition. Of course, you can see that the new layer that I created with that copy and paste is now at the top of my layer stack, and I know that I want this layer to be all the way down at the bottom, and so I will drag that layer down into the position at the bottom of the layers stack. Another helpful option is the ability to lock individual layers so that they don't get selected when you click within the button design. For example, if I want to move this primary image a little over to the left so that it's not cut off, then I would want to make sure that I'm clicking directly on that layer. I don't want to accidentally click on my shape layer or my text layer, for example. 
and I can prevent certain layers from being selected when I click and drag by locking those layers. So in this case, for example, I have my text layer already locked. I can also lock my shape layer just by clicking on the lock icon. And you'll see that the lock icon appears closed when that layer is locked, and it appears open when the layer is unlocked. So now I can click in the image, of course, to select my image layer to drag it around within my button design. But now that I've locked the text and shape layer, I don't need to avoid that area of the image. In fact, I could point my mouse directly at the text or shape and click and drag, and I'm actually only moving the image back behind that text and shape layer because the text and shape layers have been locked and therefore clicking on them will not cause them to be selected. So I can more freely work within my button design to get that background image into just the right position. So as you can see, there are a variety of ways that we can work with the various layers that represent the graphic elements in our button design. We can reorder those layers, turn off the visibility of the layers, lock individual layers, copy and paste, and even delete layers as needed.